Everyone calls Maysville also the center of the universe. You know, uh, if you meet anybody on the street, no, no, no. What? <laughs> not heard that. Yeah. No. Everyone does. Have you? No. No. Well, but I'm from say. here, but no. But I mean, you know, Ellen. I believe you. She would say it um, as well. Yeah. Um, Maysville is the center of the universe. I started a food truck. Yeah, we did do the food that was, truck, the Boho Grill. That's what we were. We that's were just, what we were just gonna do. We were gonna play. We were just gonna. We were gonna play in our food truck. And, and then, then this happened. Then this happened. Yeah, because we both had been offered and didn't want to do it. And then Melissa called me one night, and she said. You're going to think I'm crazy, and I did. She said, do you want to do I was driving home Park from Cafe? I was she driving off the Cincinnati, had a vision, and I had this vision. Like Mark, yeah, and I'm thinking, I yeah. And so we did. We were not even really sure. We knew we wanted to do breakfast. That's as far as it went. Yeah. We, are all, we both had previous businesses, so. Sure. That helped. But we, we had, we still... We're gobsmacked yeah. because we did not expect the reception. I mean, we knew it would be somewhat decent because we both had good businesses. So we have followers. But from the moment we opened, it's been insane. <laughs> So you're like a mogul in Maysville. You're a Maysville mogul. Don't know about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't know. They both are. They yeah, both are. I don't and know then, about that, but I, I've been around for a while. Yeah. Do you know the history not. about it? I do not. Not much. I mean, a little bit. I know probably enough to be dangerous. It's the. It's modeled. It's the exact replica, actually, of the oldest French cafe in France. In France, really. It's an exact uh -huh. So, Bruce, it's La Procope. There's a little piece of uh, china there and one on the wall. Um, there's actually a photograph somewhere in here that uh, shows the original. But he had all of this shipped in from, like, Europe and the Middle East and, and an exact replica. So then Amy was like, the food truck, and I'm like, that's perfect. It'll pop, we'll do pop-ups. It's no big deal. And then... Then we just lost developed. our mind. Then we lost our mind. Just developed yeah. and. But you guys are it's, packed it's, every single day. We, we, it, every we single very, day. Every very single fortunate. Day. Very From fortunate. seven to noon, there yeah. is never not someone oh. in here. No, it's really a blessing. It's yeah. a tremendous. It's a tremendous gift. Um, everybody sure says that we're a tremendous gift to the community, but honestly, it's a tremendous gift for us and to us and for our families and. Um, just a blessing yeah, to be here. It's a it's a What's magnificent a venue. venue. Um, wonderful, wonderful customers and um, wonderful, wonderful staff. And uh, I don't know. I'm totally sold on Mason County and Maysville. And there's so much history, like here in, in Washington, uh, it goes back to 1790, you know, when Simon Kenton started this, trying to get everybody to come settle here. And he was, he was really looking to have the perfect town. He didn't want just anybody here. And so when he went down to the river to greet people and, and invite them up, they had to be of some stature that could be live up to what he wanted. Educators, doctors, lawyers, those type of people. So of course in the early 1790s up to the 1800s, they had about 99 all cabins out here when they settled. And I just think there's such a, a variety of things you can do in this little, little town because we still got the cabins and that the children love that. So that would be a great way to bring your family in. You can do a self-guided tour. You can come out and have a tour, but it, it affects all age groups. 
you know, so, you know, if you do a complete tour, you're going to get everything, the old history, the log cabins, um, you're going to get the Underground Railroad part of it, and then you're also going to see a little bit about what's going on now and how we're trying to rebuild and get some of these buildings back to the way they were or whatever. Yeah. And then downtown Maysville, I think, is unbelievable because I know, of, and I travel quite a bit in study. I don't know another city that has that many older buildings that are still standing and look as good as they did. Now, many of them need help, you know, still, but they're, they're just so many, and that fascinates everybody. I had a couple come in yesterday. I was down at the Cotsville, and uh, the first thing they said was, this amazes me. How do you get people to keep these buildings up? And when the boats come in, the American Queen and all those, they just, they, they want to live here. You know, how much is it going to cost for me to buy a piece of property here if I was interested in coming back? family's been doing this a long time that's really what i think people would highlight um i mean so much so that i think we're the only family to have owned a distillery prior to prohibition and still exists post prohibition um that is i don't know just something really baked into our dna i guess we love making bourbon doing it back on the original grounds where my ancestors have been doing this since uh, 1867 i am a ex-geologist. This is not something I intended to do. I picked it up in uh, 2011, and a lot of that was just fortuitous timing in the marketplace. People were, frankly, demanding more bourbon, and I had a full-time job. And, you know, so do, so do my other business partners who are my family members in this, and I'd like my career to come make more bourbon than I ever intended in my, in my life. Um, but we are really fortunate that we essentially inherited lots of the original bottles from my ancestors' times, as well as recipes and mash bills, um, really technical documents for the original distillery and their process. Um, and we also had my grandfather and his brother. They were kind of familiar with the distillery. They were really young when it was operating, but um, they were born in this home and they have this kind of Real cursory memory of, of what it was like back in those times. So this was just kind of a fun family hobby to explore this history of ours. And then we started making the bourbon again that kind of tickled the technical sense for me. And it seemed to just kind of come together with the marketplace. Um, but I, I'd say, I mean, the water we use is unique. It is really hard water. It is the same water my ancestors used. Um, the grains we use, I mean, it's corn, rye, malted barley for making old poke bourbon. They come from two farmers. Those variables at the beginning, I shouldn't say they are extremely um, special, but they are extremely unique. Nobody else uses them. Um, and I, I think that makes a big impact on the product. And we go nine years uh, aging in the barrel, and that is certainly a premium uh, product after nine years of maturation right and it's like the family history is also really interesting and yeah. there's kind of like a feeling of homecoming like how proud how proud are your grandparents oh i hope they're this? i hope they're happy i don't you know i was i was frankly told not to go into this really? like in the in the 90s bourbon was not doing great it, wasn't it was it, and it was uh um probably probably not a wise business decision to try to court that um so they largely deterred me and just tried to keep it in the category um, or, or the hobby level. But I definitely got more and more wide-eyed. And even so, I, I, like I said, I didn't approach this um, as a career. I went into another direction and 
it just kind of worked out with the marketplace more than anything else. They, my grandfather, he passed away in 2006 and he could see it like, boy, this is maybe an opportunity. So he kind of eased off with his original stance back in the 90s. But I do, I think they're probably pretty thrilled with how the whole family's come together. It is my cousin, Jack Pogue is here, just, you know, kind of randomly helping out with tours today. He loves it. It's yeah. a, it's a fun hobby for him to come through and uh, interact with customers and help with the process. So about how many visitors do you get? Oh boy, um, several thousand a year. Um, gosh, it's really compounded. Ever since the COVID has kind of, you know, gone away, um, more and more people are coming through these doors uh, than I ever expected. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, great. Well, show us, I guess, yeah. search. So you want to see the house? Show us, yeah, show yeah. us around. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Aquarium. It's really a art haven, as is Augusta. I mean, there are just tremendous, tremendous art. And then you got the Pogue Distillery, so you got bourbon. So, I mean, that's kind of nice to have in your town. And bourbon, every bottle of bourbon or every barrel of bourbon had to leave Kentucky at one point through Maysville. on the river boat. Stone Landing. It did. Yep, so that's why this was part of Bourbon <laughs> County, Virginia. And John, might, we'll talk a bit a little bit more. Oh, you got to yeah. Yeah, we're going to go see John next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they all yeah, were... because of the water of the limestone. So yeah. that's part of the... In all the but barrels, yeah, I, I won't, all, you know, let all him the barrels explain. were stamped with Bourbon County. So then when they when it went down the river and it went down south, they said, I like this whiskey from Bourbon County. And that's how it came. And so the first advertisement for Bourbon actually came from a distillery here in Maysville. Um, so that's why they say Maysville is where bourbon began its journey because everything had to leave okay. Maysville through limestone landing and then go down river. I mean, this thing, it was built in 1845. Um, I've had gosh, three generations of distillers live in it. It's a solid brick structure. Um, these stars you see on the outside are steel rods running through the floors, but basically keep the whole thing as a solid <laughs> cube different construction back then yeah but yeah lots of different pictures and artifacts in the home that are mostly relics from the family's inheritance um and not all of it is here frankly some of this down at the museum some of it's in private basements in my family's possession um but that's the original distillery back in the uh, mid 1800s. Um, it was actually the old time distillery at that point, which my ancestor was um, the master distiller of. And then he bought the company in 1876 and rebranded it the H.E. Pogue Distillery. Um, they were pretty good size shop. They made just about 100 barrels of bourbon a day. Um, and that's quite a bit in the time that doesn't have electricity, at least widely available. Um, and it was really important for them to be on the water and on the railroad back then. They processed just about 100,000 pounds of grain every day. And railroad was about the only way to do that consistently. So to make that much bourbon, you needed a big outlet. Um, and the river was how they would essentially get the product to the market. started five years ago it was just a coffee truck and the idea was to do the coffee truck see if there was uh, a need for good coffee in the neighborhood and our coffee is actually from Lexington um, magic beans and um, I wanted when I moved here it was like would you be subject to the community and maybe make a living doing and it was coffee and after about a year uh, the people that own this building came to me and asked me to move in and built us a little kitchen and as they say the rest is history but it's all from scratch all local. We make our own sausage. We get a you know regular sausage, and then we make our own chorizo, our own breakfast, our own Italian pizzas. Being from New York, we do really good pizza, and um, that's that. Our menu's literally all over the place, just from traveling. Things I've really liked, so it's very diverse. But all the basics are here: the biscuits and the gravy, and 
lots yeah, of we've got we've got a lot of really good locals here. That's what's kept us in business for five years. But we also get all the travelers. Somehow we're on a path from the Carolinas to the Indianas to the Wisconsins, and so every weekend we probably get no less than a couple dozen families that are traveling through that that find us, and that's what's really wonderful because we get to share the neighborhood, you know, the town, this little town, and our food with them, and so they're really digging. I guess Google. <laughs> We've got really good reviews, so apparently we're like number one on the list for like coffee and and food, or coffee shop, or cafe, or that sort of thing. So there, yeah, and a lot of people they come out of their way to to get, and it's like they call it, consider us an oasis. You know, finally, really good coffee and some good food. Apparently, being on the road, you know, when you're only pulling over truck stops, but I guess the back road, right back way here, we just happen to be in a good spot. Which is awesome. I had no idea. So what are the must -see? Well, the, the guided tours here are just fantastic. And just literally walking up and down this building, there's a little print shop open down there. I think it's more than a print shop, but it's in one of the old uh, log cabins that are made. It's just, it's brilliant. And then, of course, downtown is, is a sight to be seen. It's fantastic. Really good stuff. But just, uh, yeah, it's walking and gazing. Finding good stuff. Well, and where else besides here? Which <laughs> Oh, well, just, I mean, anywhere. Oh, Bab, Bab's Bistro downtown is fantastic. Love those guys. Uh, and her food is all scratch and local. Same same principle. Same love. And what else? I mean, the pub. Pandemonium's really good. Um, what else? Eat Gallery has got some fantastic artwork. Unbelievable stuff. Um, jewelry. Art. I mean, it's just... It's 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 like a Cincinnati boutique gallery, but downtown Mesa, which is really neat.